Hi, everyone, and welcome to this Facebook Live. It is April 3rd, and just, uh, what, about a little over 24 hours ago, we had a tornado come through northwest Arkansas. I know, it's crazy to think. Two. Yeah. Two tornadoes. Yeah. That's right. So here's the deal. I know you guys were commenting how eerie it was. I want to hear your experiences. I want to hear. You can comment. Let us know. We're going to go through a lot of stuff. Um, so now you might remember at the beginning of our Facebook Live when we were talking about how the storm event was not over yet. It was a little delayed. If anything, we were a little too early on the timing, but we had to have that time window in there to be early just yeah. in case storms did pop up. We know up. Southwest Flow is pretty yeah. early sometimes. And sometimes those storms can pop up a little earlier than expected. But – Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take you through the archive. We're going to take you through the radar. Was there any way to detect these? Not really, to be honest with you. Nope. So Kelly's asking, why did not the tornado sirens even go off? We had no warning in Pea Ridge. There was a severe thunderstorm warning, and we'll go through that as well. Uh, however, there was no tornado warning, and I can't fault the Weather Service for this. There were right. radars that were down that night. There was also a radar beam that was over 6,000 feet above the ground. and you, Over 9,000 feet. Oh, even higher. Yep. And you just can't even tell where the circulation is. But uh, Ian says this hit a mile from me. So let's get to it. Let's take a look at the archived radar. Now, remember, this is archive radar. You don't have to worry about this being the actual radar. Uh, you'll obviously hear a lot more if it was the actual radar. But this is why we were saying the storm event wasn't over. And I know a lot of you said, bust, nothing happened. Well, that was a big dud. We weren't done yet, and we knew that. We looked at the ingredients. Here's the one thing we did know. Southwesterly flow, zero to three kilometers, 60 knots. That is extremely high. That is double what we normally can have with QLCS tornadoes. We also knew the zero to three kilometer cape, the instability in the lowest levels underneath our radar beam would allow for that air to rise rapidly. So you have a spin, you have rising air, and next thing you know, you got tornado potential. So let's go into this and look at this frame by frame. And we're going to start off with the severe thunderstorm warning. This is why it's good to have situational awareness. Severe thunderstorms can and occasionally do produce tornadoes with little or no advance warning. That used to be in the phrase of severe thunderstorm warnings. And it used to let people know about that tornadoes are possible. So here is the severe thunderstorm warning. If we look at it, there was, I don't believe, a tornado possible tag. Um, now, one of the things we know is that there was definitely some shear. So if we uh, go to a two panel here and bring up the velocity on one, and we'll bring up the storm relative velocity on the other. We're going to set the storm motion from the warning. You're going to notice some red and greens showing up. But the thing is, is like this whole entire line has red and green showing up. So it's an elongated shear. That elongated shear means that you have rotation, but you can't tell and pinpoint exactly where there could be a tornado. Now, when you look at this, maybe Noel might have one because you can see a little bit of a reflectivity nub. But, you know, you can make a reflectivity nub out of all of these. And is it really an artifact of the radar or is it a true? Right feature of a QLCS. I don't know. It's tough to determine. Especially that far away from the radar. Now, we do know the radar. Now, here's the thing. 6,500 feet, 6,500 feet above the ground was your radar beam. So a little over 6,000 at this point. Yeah. 
So you've got this circulation right here. You can see the upside down triangle. That is the radar depicting a TVS, but you'll also notice this purple area. That's called range folding. And what that means is what happens is a pulse is sent out to the radar and another pulse is sent out from the radar. Well, since there's two pulses, just like if you were to send a, a, you know, a radar gun, which is when they measure speed, the pitches, uh, you know, you've got uh, police officers using a radar gun to measure how fast something is. If there's two pulses, one comes in, the other one comes in, and then the first one comes back and the second one comes back. And there's a small, minute fraction of difference in the time that it gets back. If the storm is moving away from the radar, the winds are moving away from the radar. So what's going to happen then is those two pulses will come in, they'll hit, and they'll be separated more because it takes longer for the pulse to come back to the radar, the energy, if the, ra if the rain is moving away from the radar. But if it's moving towards the radar, what do you think happens? The pulses are closer together. And so that's how the radar knows due to Doppler and the Doppler effect if the storm is moving away or towards the radar. But sometimes those pulses get mixed. Yep, the radar doesn't know. And the radar doesn't know which pulse is which, and that's that range folding, and that happens at a certain distance from the radar. But what we had on, um, unfortunately, what we had on uh, April 2nd, we had a lot of range folding, and it was happening in very crucial parts of the storm. So, Michael, uh, I did see your damage uh, pictures with the damage. Um, I saw a lot of other people that sent pictures with the damage. I'll be honest with you. I haven't even had time to really go through my email. It's yeah. been so busy. I've been going on Eclipse Talks. I've been doing everything else. And uh, everyone in Pea Ridge were sitting ducks. And uh, that's that's true. But at the same time, you shouldn't just, you know, start to be aware when there is – just the uh you know when there's no tornado warning you have to be alert of severe thunderstorm warnings this is why it's good yeah. to have that situational awareness mm -hmm. so well, let's go through here we'll look at the rest and there's a circulation that's coming through we'll look at the radar again if you have uh experiences let me know i want you to know i want me to i want you to tell me what you experience now here's a circulation all across the area now the problem another problem was is there wasn't a whole lot of lightning we were looking at weather bug cameras. There was no way to visually see this. QLCS is a rain wrap. They're terrible. They're awful to view. Um, in fact, there's only been one time that I've actually seen a feature of a QLCS that produced a tornado, and you can barely even tell, looking at the cloud, that there's a circulation there, unlike a supercell or a wall cloud. But we'll step along here, look at the next one, and now we're starting to see a little bit of stronger circulation. Well, when we look at the base velocity, you can also see a little bit of that circulation just to the south of Bella Vista, but it didn't really produce much wind damage at this point. You can see east, northeast of Bella Vista, large tree limb uh, through the roof of a home. So we know the storm was strong enough. You guys were reporting that you heard a roar, but look, you can see the rotation kind of drops off. Now we know it's gusty winds that are moving away from the radar, but there's not a lot of towards the radar, the green colors. If we look at the storm relative velocity, there's a rotation all along it. We try to pinpoint the circulation. It's all over the place. You can see it up and down the radar, but where exactly is it? It's tough to pinpoint. So no, no tornado warning. And I can't fault the weather service for this. So if we look at this point, wind damage is starting to come into Pea Ridge. Now I know a lot of you are confused why there was no tornado damage reported in Pea Ridge. What happens in a tornado, especially a QLCS tornado, is you get something called the rear inflow jet. This is an area of winds aloft that comes racing down to the ground. And what happens is, is that is the initial stages of the QLCS in order for that mesovortice to develop. So you have to have the initial, essentially what's called a rear flank downdraft. But instead, with a QLCS, it's called a rear inflow jet. Um, and that's because you have an area of winds that are coming down from the storm in the mid-levels that already has a spin to it because of the shear. So when that gets pulled up into the vertical, that happens pretty quickly. So let's go back to the archive radar and see what we have. Uh, so P Ridge, if we look at the rotation, it does show stuff, but it's like 
okay. It's very broad. It's super broad. All, all along the line, it looks the exact same. Of course, yeah. hindsight's twenty twenty. We can pinpoint now dates on the on the yeah. radar, but looking at it, you can't tell in real time. When we're watching a whole bunch of other stuff, you just can't. So one thing I I do notice that's pretty evident is this right here. You see this? Yeah. That is actually the development of a rear inflow jet, which I didn't catch before. If you look at it, it's hard to do when it's in real time. But you can see right here, this is a descending reflectivity core, I do believe, because you can tell that there's reflectivity that is moving away from the radar rapidly. And do you see that? And it's nosing right into the leading edge of the line. So that is probably that wind damage. But then look. It kind of falls apart. And there's no line split. There's no line break. There is a little bit down here. But you'll notice how that is balanced. Everywhere along that is balanced. Yeah. And remember we were talking about that. It's called the UDCZ. The UDCZ, the updraft, downdraft convergence zone. This right here is balanced, meaning you have two rotors that are developing, one ahead of the storm, one behind it. And these are the rotors. And if they're balanced, what's going to happen is because that balance takes place, the air is going to rise up into the storm, and that will allow the rotation, the mesovortice to develop. But if you have one that is going faster than the other, well, guess what? That shear is going to end up tilting over like this. And so it's actually backwards in the camera. It tilts over like this. That is called shear dominant. So you have the thunderstorm that's actually out ahead of the UDCZ, the updraft downdraft convergence zone. If you have this where one other side is stronger, then you have essentially cold pool dominated. Now you got the thunderstorm that is leaning back this way instead of the other way, and all of the uh, rain and the thunderstorm activity is behind the outflow. And that is where you have cold pool dominant. But when it's balanced like that, you can get those two rotors that will create rising motion straight up. Yeah. Wyatt, you're just like, <laughs> probably, probably a lot of other people are too. But, uh, but uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. Okay, let's get to some stories here. Woke up at 1.30 a.m. in Pea Ridge due to the winds. Uh, I was listening to see if I heard the sound of the train, uh, much like those experienced in the Joplin tornado. Thank God it went through quickly. Now, 1.30 was way late because it actually happened gone. around 12.30. Yeah. So I think maybe you meant 12.30 because that's what time it came through. It wasn't 1.30. I know it seems like it was that late, but it was actually 12.30. But we were way on after that because at 1.30 there was a storm that was tornado-worn down south, and we'll go to that too. Hey, look at that. Hi, Heidi. Heidi Scoff, see, last name. That's my yeah. brother's wife right there. Oh, it's my cool. sister-in-law. Hey, hope you're doing well. Um, so, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. So, um, is that right? Is it sister-in-law? If it's my brother's wife, yep. I'm terrible with the family tree. I know storms and all that stuff. It was on the live cam in Bentonville. The lowering was. Uh, speaking of that, I was gonna say, it's interesting you mentioned that because see, the thing about that is that the Bentonville. Uh, square camera actually went down during that time. Uh, it we had so many issues, man. Radar data was down, yep. the radar network was down. Thankfully, Fort Smith was one radar that was working, but it didn't seem like the data was very good. Something uh, was going on the whole time. Um, cyber attack, I yeah. Don't know. And and we did have that, uh, yeah, Dan's family tree. I'm I'm terrible with that, really? I, I really am. <laughs> yeah, makes two of us. Are you don't get it either? I pride myself, but it's confusing. Well, I think that's awesome because I can't figure it out. Yeah, a lot but, of people can't, but as a great grandson of a genealogist, I know I, I know quite just a bit don't about get it. So, Rena, the reason it didn't hit Fort Smith is just the energy lag back, and and it just sometimes that happens. Sometimes Fort Smith gets it, other times uh, and the places get were it. Less favorable by yeah. the time the energy yeah did get there. Yes, because the front came through, there wasn't enough lift. Let's go back to the radar now and see what we've got. So there's Garfield. There's the storm moving overhead. And voila, you have your tornado already coming through at this time. So you we're still can't really you tell. can't tell. You can see a little bit right there, but because zoom out. There's other areas yeah. that look more 
promise. Oh, that. yeah. Like, like uh, northwest of Springdale. Yeah, northwest of Springdale. Now, you'll notice here that that's balanced. Northwest, yeah. The only difference is, is that's kind of oriented from northeast to southwest. Right. And I was saying, like, yeah. it looks the same. Oh, I know. You can't tell. Yeah. Well, look at this. You got Cassville here. That's a circulation. And I think that did actually end up getting warned, tornado warned, I think, over time as it developed. Or maybe yeah, not. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was a little bit later on. It was though. a little later on that it did. Yeah. And then there was another storm that ended up being by, was that a different day, Springfield? No, there was. That a, was. Yeah, yeah there was. that was another one. But then here's that supercell that was tornado warned. And, and look, that circulation doesn't look near as good nope. as the other one. It does later on. But yeah. We didn't load all of that data. So if we come much. back, yeah, if we come back this time, you can see at this point, that looks pretty stout. Now, here's what I'm going to do I'm going to set the storm motion for the warning, oh, and yeah. you're going to see some differences in the colors. Um, right here, it looks pretty good, though. That's a pretty well defined storm. And then there's where things really start ramping up. And you might remember that live stream. We were talking about it. Um, and, uh, we said, oh, man, you really got to watch this storm in northwestern Sequoia County. And then right after that. But this is not the warning. second tornado. This actually never produced a tornado, to our knowledge. To our knowledge. Now, I know there was damage in Brentwood. Yep. I actually went there and checked it out. What I saw is that was essentially no tornado damage. Um, it was all straight line winds because it all went in one direction. So uh, not the band, but just one direction. Boo. Oh, that was bad. That was oh, bad. brother. Man. Crickets. Crickets. Yep, yep. Okay. <laughs> Let's get to some comments here before I lose everybody. Thank you so much, Shannon. Appreciate that. Yeah, these guys rocked it, man. Really, really appreciate each and every one of them. Michael, I got to check out the damage pictures again. I saw them briefly. I saw some other people sent me some information in Bentonville. I tried to forward that to the Weather Service, but I didn't have access to it. And honestly, I got a lot of emails to go through um, because I've been up and down giving Eclipse presentations. I haven't and been, been able to go busy. through them either because I've been, I did all the shows you, last night. <laughs> you see how that works? Yeah. You're doing all the shows, you literally, you literally can't have do, nothing. You, have to do. Nothing, you, you can't, can't do anything. Do I just didn't turn down and up quick. Yeah. So, how quick were, were these tornadoes? Well, we've got the information hot off the press. Huh? Both of them they're right on top. That's of what we're going to do. Yeah. That's what I'm going to show you. So here it is right here. Two tornado paths, both on top of each other, basically. Mm -hmm. So you got two QLCS tornadoes that are happening. Jesse says, I live just a couple miles south of the military park. The winds down here are the worst I ever witnessed. The tornado of 1947 that wiped out Brightwater proves this valley won't protect you. Man, that's good stuff right there. Oh, she knew that. about the Brightwater yeah. tornado. That was an EF four or an F four at the time, but uh, very good stuff, Jesse. Oh, yeah, and that was also the same year that Woodward got hit too in 1947. That was a bad tornado year. Um, kind of like a microburst. It, it, it is kind of the rear inflow jet, but not quite because the downburst comes straight down and spreads out. The rear inflow jet comes down on an angle and hits and pushes out the storm forward. So we already talked about why I didn't get bad in Fort Smith. I already said hi to my sister-in-law. Uh, I am curious, too. I was watching the storms live, and there were no warnings or watches issued. Now, let's get into that, Juliana. There were no watches, and I think that personally was silly. Yeah. I, I mean, they yeah. really did just about everything around. Bend that didn't make county. Any sense. Did everything they just really around didn't. Benton County yet? And they finally added it during those storms, yeah. which made... Before they moved in, but it was only like 20 minutes before. I thought it was right before. It was like 20 minutes before the storms moved in, uh, which is unbelievable. I but uh, Carroll County I, that, was out too, right? That was weird, huh? Carroll, Carroll County was out too. Yeah, so Benton Carroll County, where the worst of it was, was left out. The key was the kiss of death. That, that, that does happen. Now... The Storm Prediction Center, the ones that issue the box, and then the Weather yeah. Service goes through and looks at the counties. And I get it. The models weren't developing as much stuff in Benton County, but we yeah. know how models are. They're pretty terrible. So um, we're going to get to some video, Rena, and look at that lowering here. And I'm going to watch that with you. We're just going to go through about, what, six minutes of video? 
Yeah, right about six or seven. Let's do it because I want to see if there's anything in there is e either. We live right there in Garfield. Tiffany, I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah. Um, it wasn't able to be detected. Here's the problem with our location. We live in a radar hole. And what I mean by that is we have multiple radars and they're all far away and everything's over our heads way up because the beam can only get so low as the earth curves the beam goes out straight the farther away you get from the radar the higher up it is due to the earth's curvature and there's nothing you can do to except put a radar close in northwest arkansas hint 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 which is something that may be something feasible soon i mean how long um, have they been arguing about these radar holes uh Jesse did say we had plenty of warning that a tornado or tornadoes could drop from these storms. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. We tried to emphasize that we did as possible. Uh, we looked at all the conditions. We looked at the meso analysis, and so um, we'll look at. I live off of Gan Ridge Road near the path of the tornado one. P Ridge got hit hard. So many trees down were shut down. Power was out. This was a bad one. It absolutely was. But I know it wasn't uh, – we had Josh Rugger there. I haven't been there. Here's the deal. I'm going there tomorrow because I'm going to Garfield, oddly enough, to talk about the total solar eclipse and weather. Oh, wow. <laughs> Guess what I'm adding to the uh, presentation? That? Yeah, that. So uh, – You know, I'm kind of curious uh, Yeah. the Pea Ridge damage. Um, where I'm at on, like, the northern end, mm -hmm. didn't really have much. We just had some sheet metal and fencing that we have laying around go around. Really? Or fly around. Yeah. We didn't have any damage. It was pretty was localized, it. wasn't it? Yeah, so I wonder if it was just on, like, the southwestern part of Pea Ridge or just the southern side of it. From what I heard, it was kind of in the central and eastern part of Pea Ridge. Um, but... uh yeah, that's what I heard. It's kind of like almost right in the middle of Pea Ridge. If you guys live in Pea Ridge, let me know. Uh, Gan Ridge Road. So that's where uh, Patrick lives. Anna says this. I know sometimes it's hard for people to heed the severe thunderstorm warning, but I also feel this is why we need to take any warning seriously. Exactly. March 30th of 22. That was the Springdale tornado. And remember what I said? I'm like, we should review that Facebook Live because I was just like, we're probably going to have a storm that comes through. It's probably going to produce QLCS tornadoes. They're not going to go warned. I know how this works. And unfortunately, the environment was very favorable. We knew it was very favorable. We looked at the zero to three kilometer shear. We looked at all the ingredients. They were all there. So now I know hindsight is 2020. You look at it, it's a lot easier to look at. Um, but, but we knew going when the storms were coming in that. All the ingredients were favorable that's, for yeah. yesterday, yesterday morning. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what we're saying. Can't believe it was only yesterday morning. It seems like yeah, it feels like it, it was it feels a, a week ago. ago. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that's because we've been up. Was all the Centerton damage just straight line winds? I do believe so, but I never checked it out. I saw someone have a video that said they saw a potential power flash. Um, I haven't been able to look at it yet because I tried to open up the files. I didn't get access. I asked for access. I don't know why Google Drive has to be so weird like yeah. that when you when you have the wrong email opening up. And then I even try to load up in, in Gmail. Um, but anyways, I woke up in Pea Ridge, what sounded like a really strong wind wrapped in rain. It hit the side of the house really hard. I've heard this sound other times in my life. All the times a tornado was nearby. Hubby stayed up and watched the radar. Nothing tornado showed here. He said it would blow up the military park, and it did. Glad everyone is okay. Man, me too. Glad everyone is okay. That's the blessing out of all this. Yeah. You know, this will be a problem that will reoccur, and how can this be corrected so warnings regarding tornadoes are not missed? So there's a thing that the Weather Service issues called um, tornado possible tags. And this happens with severe thunderstorm warnings where they have a tornado possible tag. Now, we're going to go back to this. Say, and we're going to go to the radar. And, and uh, Mega Doppler takes a long time to load the individual radar stuff. But let's go into this. And we can bring up those warnings. Watch warning legend. And we're going to have to go to data time. And we'll be able to see if they issue anything called a. Um, yeah, hold on just a second. Just watch his warnings, no fill. 
this is going to tell us if there's a tornado possible tag that ever got issued with this. Oh, and by the way, here's all the watches too. So there's the tornado watch for Southwest Missouri, the tornado watch for Northeast Oklahoma and Delaware County. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do this real quick. Stand by because I don't have the actual um, correct banner on there. So we're going to go back in time. And I take this back. I'm going to bring it up a different way, too. I'm going to go to Lightning Research because this has the banner that loads up every minute on the radar. Okay. And uh, I'll turn off the Lightning, but um, we're going to go here. I'm going to go back to a custom, and we're going to go back in time uh, 48 hours. Let's just do this. Let's go back minus 48. That'll get us, that'll get us the current time. Okay, so I'll turn off all the lightning because it's going to be a lot on there. But uh, I'm going to go here. We're going to turn on the warnings. So watch warning. Polygon, no fill for emphasis. And I'm also going to turn off. So first of all, let's see when that warning was issued. So the first warning, I guess I got to go back longer than 48 hours. How about that? Custom minus 50. So, all right. So here's the first severe thunderstorm warning, not tornado possible tag. So that's something that uh, you can see right there. When there were already multiple tornadoes that happened, QLCS tornadoes, uh, that the Weather Service confirmed. If we go along in time a little bit more, here's the next severe thunderstorm warning. Now, because this is going so fast, I'm going to do something else. <laughs> I'm going to go to custom. We're going to set the custom date. Sorry, bear with me here. While I'm doing this, Peyton, you got anything to add at all? Just while I'm uh, typing in this um, stuff. I Like the ingredients were there. We try to stress that enough. Even uh, like over TV. I hope that we did. Yeah. For those that did watch, let us know if we didn't. Yeah. That's it, always something that. You know, we like feedback on because we know everything was there, but did we stress it enough on TV and on the Facebook Live for people to heed our warning, even though when there wasn't one? That's that's kind of the goal for us as a team is to be ahead of the radar, be ahead yeah. of the storms and get the information out there that the radar isn't telling. Yeah. So I hope we did that. I, I don't know. Yeah, but, we can have people let us know, and yeah. we'll, we'll take the criticism because we can always get better. So here's a look at the severe thunderstorm warning that was issued at uh, 1119, 1137. This is an hour before the tornado hit, mm -hmm. and that gives you an idea, and that's why we did the Facebook Live saying we're not done. Yep. There's no way we're done with this event, and you could really see the energy moving in. So here's the severe thunderstorm uh warning again that gets cropped out now the next one gets issued this is when people really started getting on the weather radios unless they had everything turned off except tornado warning so there it is at 11 54 that was issued and uh let's see take that there you go sorry one. yeah till 12 19 and that's a weird expiration time but uh i think that's the actual expiration time so there you got it Severe thunderstorm warning. There's the update to the warning. Let's go a little bit farther east. This is right before the tornado. Yep. Tornadoes. Tornadoes, yeah. 1224, 1226. And then no tornado possible, though. Now, is there a tornado possible here? No tornado possible. Nope. Now, where was a tornado possible? Let's see. And what do we mean by that? I'm going to show you what I mean. When we look at, oh, there's there's the watch, by the way. After the tornadoes. And not even in Benton County. You're right. Why? The yeah. watch did come out. That's what I thought. Okay, wait. The watch was issued at. Oh, initially it wasn't. Benton and Carroll County weren't at it. Then eventually they were. Yeah, that doesn't appear right. Yeah, because it had. I know for a fact it wasn't added, and it was 1254. That's like after the storms already come through. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. 
See this orange right here? See how it's a different color orange is this? That's because right here, tornado possible. That lets you know that even though the storm might be weakening, it still has the potential to produce a tornado. And then you'll notice it gets upgraded from a tornado possible to a tornado warning. So the precursor of a tornado possible to a tornado warning is a supercell, in my opinion. Yeah. They don't they won't won't do it for QLCS they don't. lines because it's so iffy. Yeah. Err on the side of caution, in my opinion. But a supercell, it's a lot easier to tell. And it was a lot closer to the Fort Smith radar. So it did have better velocity couplet because it was a supercell not embedded in a line. And it was closer. So that's why they were able to do it for that supercell and not the line in uh, Benton and Carroll County. We can get the now rad. Yeah, so now, now rad. Yeah. yeah, twister quote. Oh, yeah, yeah he's yeah. talking about dot, dot three. Yeah, yeah, yeah real <laughs> rad next time. <laughs> Pulse track Doppler. Um, uh, okay, so let's see here. Let's get to some other uh questions That's, here. That was the last comment. So, we're which one? Down here. Okay. I'm in Cassville. No warning that I know of. It was actually very calm here. I was amazed. I cleaned my closet to stay awake. Yeah. Cassville is definitely um, mm -hmm. getting storms. And I remember the severe thunderstorm warning that came out. But uh, Patrick Ferry, y'all got lucky. That was the one tornado warning storm that just barely clipped northwestern Crawford County. It went through a few miles south where it did when it came through my town. I was talking to someone in Winslow, Chris in Winslow. I talked to him after the fact. Okay. He could hear the wind rustling, and he, he didn't get much hail. That's because the storm tracked just a little to his uh, his north. Yeah. yeah, He got the hail core, mm -hmm. but the actual um, circulation tracked south of him. So the cir circulation was a little south oh. of his location because he's a little north of Winslow. Okay. Dawes is laughing. Not sure what that is. Maybe he's laughing at us. I he's don't know. crying. I don't know. Yeah, he's, he's crying laughing. Curious about what radar you use at the station. So I do like WSV3, but uh, I I just can't go wrong with GR2 Analyst version. GR2 3. Analyst. I've it's been using so it good. for a couple of years. Yeah, it's so I, good. It's so much better. He knew a lot about GR2 when he got here. That was awesome. Y'all were on it as it was about to pop. Uh, tornado, tornado warning one. right as it happened. Not yeah. in not in Benton County. Yeah. But in the River Valley, yeah. You were watching for Brandon Mountain. I'll tell you, Brandon Mountain, did you incur any damage, Alice? Because that was a nasty storm. And Josh Rugger was on that. And uh, you know, there wasn't much he could do with the terrain, but he did yeah. see the lowering, he did see the wall cloud. This is the worst area to storm chase in the world. Yep. <laughs> I will not go through a storm of any kind unless you guys get me through it. Oh, thanks, Sarah. I appreciate that. So that's a severe thunderstorm. Or that's a warning. Never mind. Oh, um, Dawes says. I'm searching for it, though. With what? The When that uh, severe thunderstorm watch was. Watch? Out. Yeah. Great job on the live stream Monday uh, from start to end. Thanks, Dawes. I appreciate thanks. that, man. Bring it on that long. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, that was a long time. Okay, the local WFOs had radar data still because the radars connect with old school T1 lines. That's important to know. Hopefully, this will prompt Noah to switch to level one data to the cloud-based server. Man, that's uh, that's that's a really awesome point that I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. So it actually is going to be happening. I can't tell you much, but by the end of 2024, there will be a local radar that's installed. Yeah. That's it. And we're going to try to get our local radar back online. We have a radar that we used to have. I watched it all the time. I was able to control it, too. It was cool. I could do sector scans. You were able to do your own, like, VCP? I was able to do my own RHI, my own nice. VCP. I could change that. And then also I could do sector scans. So there was one time there was a storm in Washington County. This was back in the... If you guys have been here a while, this would have been around 2009, 2010, before we moved buildings. There was a hook echo, and I was going back and forth on the sector scan, 
just over 25 degrees, and you could see the hook just developing. Just for the hook? Just for the hook. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it was cool. So that uh, severe thunderstorm watch uh, was put out at 435 uh, Z. Z. And then the severe thunderstorm warning uh, was at 454 Z. Okay. So so yeah. it was a little before the storm yeah, rolled about, in. That's what I thought. I don't know why that didn't show up on here. That's weird. Um, I'll be happy when I can't stop by changing the uh, <laughs> changing the direction of your ceiling fan. No kidding. Got to do that when it's cold to bring the warm air down yeah. and then keep you cool in the summer. Uh, blowing that air down. So uh, we watch you all night. I did hear. I didn't hear a roar. Sound like huge hail. Definitely hitting debris. Hitting the side of our trampoline playhouse. Man, my goodness. Gas seeing our yard damage and all the roads next. I'm super surprised that we aren't in the path. So Lauren, tell me where you were at. I would love to know. Wish you could put a camera on the towers behind my house. That would be nice. Uh, Thank you, Jesse. Appreciate it. I absolutely love Garfield. I called my friend today to say if they need any help. It hit right by my friend's house. Yeah. I know Josh was there. also know one of our storm spotters, Ryan Lemery. His friend had a house that was hit, and he was um, – That was his friend's house? That was his friend's house. Wow. Did you know that? Yeah. Man, he was over there helping him out. Massive tree ripped right up next to the shortstop. You should see – you should stop and see that. I will. We're going to check that. We're in the middle of Pea Ridge, so that's what uh, – mm. She said about that. Um, you were in the path of the RFD. Sometimes that that not, excuse me, that rear inflow jet can be real narrow. They actually determined this on the February 29, 2012 tornado that hit um Branson. In Pittsburgh, there was a R a rear inflow jet, an RIJ that went through Pittsburgh that had over 100 mile an hour winds, but it was straight line winds. Yeah. And my buddy Tyler was there, just up the road from us. Only large trees down. I'm glad I don't live. I'm, I'm glad I didn't live in Pea Ridge anymore. No fatalities. Nobody was even hurt, so that was nice. Yes, very, very good. A few down trees. There were some down trees, and that can often cause some issues. But thankfully, nobody was injured. I was outside on the porch during the power flashes in Centerton, and they were after big lightning bolts, well after the main line pushed through. Okay, that's important to know. Yeah, <laughs> because we saw a lot of lightning flashes, and we saw our camera. I think that's when the Bentonville camera went down. I was going to say because it was after the line. Mm -hmm. It was after the line, wasn't it? I think it was just. Yeah, it may have been. Let me look real quick. In the meantime, I want to watch this video. Um, it's I'm actually gonna, right when it's rolling in. I'm load it up with VLC. So. Oh, yeah, we we got all this here. So we're going to watch this. Is there video? Is there a sound on this? Is there? No. I thought I heard it. Yeah. I may have recorded with audio. You recorded you audio, too. Put the <laughs> microphone on there. Okay, so let's do this. Let's let's check this out. So it's I want to watch this with you. So, so it's about three minutes. Nine minutes right here. Nine minutes, 16 seconds. Oh, well, where are you getting three minutes? Where are y'all getting that? That's the long That's one you sent long me. the video is, nine minutes. Yeah. All right. Well, let's yeah, load. It is. Okay. I was saying it's three minutes into the video. Three minutes into the video that it gets interesting. So let's check this out. Let's watch it. Uh, you and me and everybody else. I've never seen it before. What is this? No. Okay. We're going to share this. All right. Docs to our IP addresses. Yeah, I know. That's fine. I see that. Um, yeah, well. So here we go. Let's play it. Let's watch it. So we've got top right camera loaded up. Cooper Elementary. Cooper Elementary in Bella Vista. You can yep. see the winds going in one direction, which, by the way, is almost straight north. The camera on the bottom right is Bentonville. Camera on the bottom left is Pea Ridge. And I can hear you. So, yeah, you can hear me. I can hear you talking. 
So here we have this storm off in the distance. Now you said about three minutes into it, it gets real interesting, huh? Yeah, yeah I didn't realize that that was recording with audio. Yep, it is. So we can see the lightning off in the distance. Oh, that looked interesting. Okay, hold on. I want to go back here. be tough to do oh yeah. yeah did you see that yeah that was definitely oh whoa okay hold on here time out this is what you got to do at night and how do you see this in real time stand by be looking in the bottom left whoa i just missed it okay Here we go. Gosh darn it. Can you not go back? No, you can't go back a frame. Or can you? I think you can only go forward. You can go a lot slower. Yeah, yeah I'm, past I'm past it. it. 125. Okay, 125. Stand by. Keep hitting it too fast. No, no, just keep waiting. Sorry, we're going through this together. Oh, man, what is that? It's kind of where the power flash was, too. That's very there suspicious. Was. Well, I guess it's a good, uh, good thing I recorded this. Yeah. Wow. Well, there you go. On the leading edge of the line. That's hanging down quite a bit. You can tell that's the cloud, not a pole like I thought. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but that was – in, in my monitor, it looked it like the cloud base. It was a, it was like a reverse yeah. contrast kind of deal. <sighs> yeah. That's suspicious. I'm taking a screenshot of that. That's real suspicious. Got to use the old snip tool. Ah, I'm going to use old paint. The Gilday special. I'm the paint. I'm the paint man. I'm a paint man. All right, so let's go back to this. Here we go. Hide. That's interesting right yeah. there because that's looking due west. That's center 10. A lot of people said they had wind damage in center 10. Said it felt yeah, like a tornado, a sounded right. like a tornado. That's uh, sus. That's sus, man. Let's see if we see any power flashes. Underneath that, okay. Oh, of course, a raindrop, raindrop right, right where we need it. Just like that, almost looked like a power flash there. I'm still seeing it off in the distance, and that is looking at the P Ridge Whoa. camera on the bottom left. Bottom left is P Ridge. Yep. Go back here. So that's uh, Josh Weisel talking. Let me go back here. Sorry, we can't see comments right now because we're we're combing through this. And ignore any of the audio you hear in the background and whatever I'm doing on the top left. <laughs> what? Dude, that looks like a power flash. Dude, that looks like a tornado. Whoa. Okay, I'm going back. Um, is there a way to go back? Uh, I don't know. Playback. So speed, jump forward, jump back. See if there's a way to go backwards because I know E is to go forward uh, a frame, but I don't know about backwards a frame. Do how you were doing it. Okay. There. Taking too long. Well, I'm trying to look for that specifically. <laughs> I am taking too long. Stand by. What? Hmm. I think we might have a tornado. Yeah. Honestly. Might have to review that. All right, let's see what people are saying. That looks a lot like a tornado. My goodness. Um, yeah, still going. P Ridge isn't even mentioned in the city. So if this was a tornado and it came right to P Ridge, thanks to Wyatt, 
man, I got to give you props, dude. Yeah. I got to give you props. The last thing I thought about was recording the cameras. My my thought process was if I can look back and review uh, and just take notes if anything happens, well, it pays off for once. Yeah, sure yeah. thing. I mean, but uh, yeah. That awesome. looks a lot like a tornado. All right, let's oh, keep. Let's skip through all the comments. Well, what I asked <laughs> earlier, all the feedback. I <laughs> just get through all of that. Well, okay, but no, there was a lot of other stuff here. Um, yeah, I guess I can show this while I'm playing it because the most important one is. Uh, uh, okay, let's let's go forward here. Okay, this is the last one. Sarah Redmond, March. This is is back in Levin. See, this is half an hour ago. Oh yeah. I know you can, but that's all right. You can't log in. You can access them, but you can't log in. Um, you won't be able to adjust them. So, anyways, there's a look at uh, P Ridge. I did a good job making sure it was clear. Yeah. Want to keep going here? Let's keep going. Because this is something else. Whoa. Gosh sakes, dude. That. I think that is. But, 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 it, but it's going through a heavily populated area. If it was a tornado, it would be power flashing like crazy. Well, if it's in Centerton, there is a, some parts of Centerton which are a bit rural. You may even be able to hear Zach start talking in the background at some point. Or me. Yeah. Yeah, or you. Look, it even has a clear slot. Maybe. I don't know. It comes like a like a rain curtain. At that point? No, just like the whole thing. The whole thing? It's just like a parallelogram. <sighs> that is a that is a rotating wall cloud. Look at that sucker, man. That thing is spinning like a top. Down. Wait, it did go down? Yeah, yeah look in the bottom right. It's frozen. Okay. And look. About It's about, mm, let's see. So at about uh, 430 or 425 Whoa. or 325 mark is when it went down. The bit middle camera. The slow is coming up. Show that again here. Three minutes and 25 minutes into it. All right. So we got that. Let's see here. Wait. Would you not just... Why didn't you take a picture of the... Well... Yeah, that. Let me get that. Because I'm just kind of flying through. I know oh, we got okay. a lot of comments here. I just want to see yeah. if there's anything else here. Whoa, that is a wall cloud and a half. Look at this shot. What? That is a developing uh, tornado right there. When's that one? Um, I'm not sure. Look at the time on the top left. It's not going to be. Easy. Okay. Right, when I, you took it. So well, yeah. we'll leave it at that. And uh, we'll stop the screen share. So that's pretty interesting right there. That's definitely something to watch. Um, all right. Let's see here. Saw it. Wow, that's interesting. It's right there. Sure looks like a tornado to me. Uh, I think a small piece of that touchdown in Centerton. I would agree with that. It kind of looked like it. Well, I'm, we're going to have to see. There's a lot of people that said um, maybe there's something there. So I'll be up there tomorrow. And I'm going to check it out. Well, I'm going to be up in Garfield, uh, and then I'll have to drive west to Centerton. Yeah. So it's going to be right there. Well, I love them. I'll be cleaned up. <laughs> now, William, that's impressive right there. Appreciate that. Looks like the watch was extended in Benton County around 12.54 a.m. The, <laughs> the watch was first issued. 
see. I don't can look at this. No, I know, but but it was extended. The warning, the warning was no the severe thunderstorm watch, but remember it didn't have Benton County right. at first. Yeah. Then they amended it and then they extended it. So Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's all I have in terms of uh like just You missed four D Mega Doppler. Well guess what? We could do that. We could take a look at this storm. My goodness, man. So, P Ridge looking west. What was looking west at the time? It's this. It's it's exactly what we need um, on the radar. We're going to bring that up here. So it's there's around 1221. So, there's the weather bug cameras. I guess that would have been it. Do you have a timestamp at all? Yeah. Who's this? It may be a minute or two off, but that's generally the timestamp. Oh, my goodness. That's yeah. right. You got it. Well, uh, here, check this out. Present, share screen, window. <gasps> nah. It, it shows 1221, and that's the exact time. So that's that's pretty crazy, man. There's 1221 right there. Oh. That looked pretty impressive. Mm. All signs point to a wild storm season this year for sure. When's the next storm coming in? Guess what? April 8th of 2024. There's nothing going on that day, is there? No, nah, nothing at all. P. Ridge did have a lot of damage. Oh, I know Ryan Lemery. He's a friend of mine. How about that? <laughs> um, 8th Street over by Artisan had some damage. Down wooden fence, blown over trampoline. Looks like wind damage. Damage is still present today. The tornado that hit Garfield, that hit my cousin's house, I called Ryan after it happened. Yeah. In Bentonville, close to Centerton. Yeah, I know. The damage gets cleaned up so fast, and that's the forensics in order to determine yeah. if you actually have a tornado or not. That's the thing. It gets cleaned up so fast. Um, but anyways, wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thumb through that video. Wyatt? Nice. Yeah. What a great idea. We got to remember to hit the core myself or, yeah. or you hit record back here you know on those cameras that's uh because we could do that we can look back because the problem is is we're not able to look at we're not able to look at um now that's looking due west from p ridge so that was something that went over P bella vista and that was on the east side of bella vista so that really wasn't the centerton uh tornado that was actually probably something else but probably well, just a little north when we go back to Mega Doppler, look, you have it right here looking due west from P Ridge High School at 1221, and you have a report of damage there at 518. I, that looks a little early, in my opinion. Yeah, that's, that's not right. That's too early. That should be around 523 at the late, at the a little bit later. Yeah. Plug all the IPs in OBS. Well, I've done that, Trevor, and freaking a lot of times the camera stops running, which ticks me off. You got to put in the new IP. No, it is it is the new IP address. They still work. Like, for instance, what was the ones that didn't work last time? Do you remember? Last time, I believe. Fort Smith, right? Now Fort Smith is smooth, and I didn't do anything. Oh, it's yeah. like it just it huh. stops working on here for some reason. It's annoying. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, so our last ones was uh, Miss Laura's and Fort Smith, uh, Lincoln, which we only just now got back yeah. up. And then uh, Rogers Speaking Curry. Speaking of Lincoln, look at this. Man, look at that camera. Is this only stars? Yeah, we got the crank, uh, the sensitivity cranked way up. But how about that, man? Yeah. That is an impressive storm. So. Stronger's green. Huntsville camera was down. It was, and I couldn't see the storm, the, the isolated supercell south. We got to get that fixed too. Just a lot of cameras. Kevin said the camera not only was it down, the pole's gone. Oh, yeah. It's a problem. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that does that. Let's do real quick recap uh, of the eclipse forecast. <laughs> this won't take long, folks. It's a dud. Um, I'm concerned. I'm very concerned. Southwesterly flow. You got rain and storms of the system pushing in. The front pushes through, but guess what? It's a it's a warm front that lifts northward throughout our one Monday. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to be. Warm front, warm front, just south of the front. You've got clouds rolling in. That's the one o'clock time frame with the eclipse path rolling right over Arkansas. That is uh, totally cloudy. How about the GFS? Now remember, we still have high resolution data to go as it gets closer, but uh, here's the GFS. Tons of rain, Monday, Saturday night to Sunday morning. That system lifts out. Both models are in agreement that the low does move through and then lifts north, but they're also in agreement that that warm front starts lifting northward Monday morning, and then you can see that storm lifting north right there. So. See y'all in Southern Illinois. Yeah. Where the rest of the world will be going. Yeah. And even that's cloudy. Yeah. Now remember, this is just low resolution model data. So oh, oh let's add this too. Let's oh. let's let's throw in a little day six severe weather risk while we're at it. Yeah. In Dallas and southwest Arkansas. Now think about how many times a risk changes mm -hmm. as it gets closer. And the size expands and stuff like that. I don't know. Let's go back to Centerton real quick. And um, there's the damage that was reported west. And so there you see it right there. Picks via social media, trees down. There's the storm right there. But, you know, you look at that, you just you can't see a tornado at all. You can't confirm that via radar especially. You see the little reflectivity now, but I will say this. The leading edge of this line did look real suspicious on that video that you got. I was in the middle of it, and they said, lots of spinning going on. There sure was. That storm was definitely spinning. So we'll review that radar, uh, that video, and we'll detail it, and we'll check it out. But, man, what a wild thing. Okay, guys, take care. Have a great rest of your uh, well, night, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow as we have new Eclipse information. So anything you guys want to add? No, have a wonderful evening. Sleep well. Kind of tough, man, to figure that out. Really yeah. tough to, to, to get those QLCS tornadoes. So what was the time, the pick of the wall clouds towards Centerton? So I was looking due west towards Bella Vista, but um, that would have been right around 1221. All right, guys. Take care. Have a good one. We will see you later. Thanks for watching, and God bless.